<laughs> hey Survivor fans, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Survivor Puzzle app. The link is in the video's description. You know, being on the jury and, you know, in any season, it's it's a serious commitment and it's a serious responsibility that, you know, I've never had the opportunity to be on a jury. I've only played once and won that season. And so this is a first for me. And I'm really already taking some time to really think about what that means and to think about, you know, how those qualities of out, wit, outplay, outlast are being kind of embodied in, in the game this season. So it's, it's you know, you're, you're deciding on who's taking home $2 million. You know, this is not a small pot of money, and nor is it a small title. And so you want to make the best decision that, that feels right, that you can, you can respect that win. If I were going to vote for Michelle, you know, Michelle's game in a lot of ways is probably the most similar to a game that I would have played, whether or not in the Philippines or now, which is much more of a social game. Um, but she's also, I think, tried to be a bit more strategic. She's tried to continue to find ins, and she's not been afraid to jump when she didn't know if there was solid footing to jump or to leap when, you know, when she thought she needed to to save herself. So I would take that into consideration. She's also shown that when her back's up against the wall, you know, she's won challenges, you know, and she won ones at crucial times when we as a tribe wanted her to win because we didn't want somebody else to win and times when she knew she needed to win. And so I think there's, there's a need to give some respect to that. And so those would be two of the primary reasons why I would, I would consider giving Michelle my vote. So Tony though, Tony is somebody else like right now that could very well get my vote. You know, he could get my vote because he has, I've watched him, you know, over, over my 36 days in the game, you know, I got to, get to know him on a much more personal level and get to see how he kind of adapted his own play from the first time and was able to just kind of have a self-awareness of this is how I played the first season and I'm not going to play that way the second season. I've watched him, you know, again, win immunity challenges here at the end. Like, I think he's on number four that he won. Like, that's impressive. Like, and they've been back to back, like balls to the wall. He needs it. And he's getting the job done and you know without that necklace you're not safe so he's doing what he needs to do to stay in the game and still playing the strategy and still making hard decisions um, and he's been able to play both sides and people have allowed him to play both sides you know it's not a bad thing it's like oh no like he's over here talking to these people and they don't know if he's telling him the truth and then he's over here talking to this alliance group and they don't know if he's telling them the truth and he's made it through now 38 like this will be, if he gets through tonight, you know, 38 days in the game playing that way. And again, I can respect that as a win. Unfortunately, Natalie, I only got to see one day initially in the game and I didn't have a connection with Natalie in the game. It was, she was our first vote out and she spent the rest of her time out on extinction until she earned her way back in. So for me with Natalie, it's, it's challenging because it's almost like there are two parallel games happening at the same time. You know, it's the survivor twists are never ending, but this is a twist that is really challenging because we have, you know, there's the part of me that's like, but I was in the game for 36 days and this is how it felt to be in this game for 36 days and the emotional toll and the stress and you were not in the game. But I know that she can defend and say, but it was in a different game and we were starving and I was doing challenges and I was getting fire tokens and I was earning things. So she has an argument, but it's going to be hard for me to go, oh yeah, that's good enough because I didn't see it. So it is, it's difficult because it, it's hard to look at that connection. You know, it's hard. It feels like there's this disconnection between the edge and being in the game, but on the total flip side of it, it's a Cinderella story. You know, it's the, I was the first out. I came back in at the last, you know, at the last moment. I did what I needed to do. She came in with an idol. She found an idol. So she not only came in with an idol that sent me to Ponderosa, she then found an idol the next day. So she's come back in and been able to keep herself safe and gain traction to break apart you know, a potential final five that we thought was solid. And, you know, that's a part of Survivor. What I want to hear from her is, I think, how does she justify 
her win as someone who's been out at the edge. And, you know, I, I again, want to hear her identify very clearly how she sees that as equal or as at that same level of value as someone who stayed in the game for 39 days. A lot of things make a great survivor player. And I think we've seen, at least for myself, when I watch every season, you know, one survivor player that I loved in one season is completely different from a survivor player in another season. But at the very core of it, I believe what makes a great survivor player is the ability to adapt. It's the ability to, to adapt to whatever circumstances are happening around them and finding your own creative way to do that. And that's what Final Tribal is about, is being able to speak your, speak your game. And that's what's exciting about Final Tribal, especially from this point, right? I'm on the other side, and now I get to hear the truth about all these tribals we went through where we were all being cagey. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go in bullheaded. Whoever comes out with the, with the strategy and with the empathy and the work ethic that I would agree with, like, we have to choose a winner of all winners right now, the tonight at Final Tribal. So I will go in with open ears and an open heart. In the final three, you know, first off, Michelle, she is really likable and she is very positive when, when it gets down, you know? And I think she's a, a great survivor player. Socially, Michelle was a butterfly, right? She did try to rally the troops and she never did give up, right? And she was always trying to figure out how to break up certain groups and, and, and identifying the problem for her game. And she was good at that. She was able to identify a lot of things. Unfortunately, she just couldn't muster the numbers, right? When you have such a tight alliance and, and Tony, Sarah, and myself, she knew that and seen that coming, but she just couldn't muster the numbers. And at the end of the day, she's the last one standing out of all her numbers, which is very impressive. She won immunities. Hell, she won like three in a row, right? I didn't even get one. I got second and third this whole season, but I never got it around my neck. You know, either Tony or her were winning. And so there's something to be said about that. And she should be proud of her game. With Miss Nat, you know, um, very driven, strong, powerful woman. However, once your torch is snuffed, I feel like your torch is snuffed. So to me, there's only two people to choose from, and that's Tony and Michelle. And that's my criteria tonight. And with Tony, he's played this game from day one to day 39, the way Tony has played, except he did bring like empathy and passion into it. Um, he was one of my first alliances in Survivor. I told him about an idol and, and he stuck to that and never told anybody about an idol. I firmly believe that Tony never would have wrote my name down and he never did doing the moves that tony did hurt tony it emotionally hurt tony to vote out people that he got close with um tony cried a lot this season because he put everything he had into this game and didn't like to hurt people Tony's strengths in the game, for me, was keeping an alliance with, with myself and Sarah. Neither of us were going to write each other's name down, right? And that's what we needed in the game to get through this game, was having an alliance. And I've never had one of those, ever. <laughs> if someone goes out and plays the best of the best and wins, I think there is a strong case for the winner of an all-winner season to be the greatest winner of all, all 40 seasons you know, to this point. And I think that, uh, that that is a very strong and compelling case. Tony's path to the end was my path to the end. We were partners from day one, cops are us for life. I mean, we played the whole game together and we were partners. Anything he can take credit for, I can take credit for and vice versa. And now that I'm sitting over here, everything that I did, I'm going to give to him. And I'm going to let him take credit for it. And he can sound like it was all him. Because he has to win now. Because if he wins, then I win. Because that means we were successful. And if I won, he won. Because that means we did it. 
because only one person can win. So Tony's path, and Tony did play a great game. Even without me, he played a great game. But with me, he played a great game. And he's an awesome guy. We had a ton of fun. We did a lot of things that people would never even dream of doing. And, you know, he won four immunities. I mean, the record is five. And the people that do that are Ozzy and Brad Culpepper. Are you really putting Tony up there with them? Mike Holloway. Hell no. Tony had never won individual immunity prior to this season. And he pulled four out. I mean, that's just incredible. And so you got four wins. You found an idol. You knew where the idols were at. You knew where advantages were at. So, I mean, in the outplay portion, he crushed it. He's a hard worker around camp. He's always getting firewood. You know, he's, he's always putting the net out for fish and helping build the shelter and stuff. So staying up at night, tending the fire, staying up all night, you know. Um, so the, the, the outplay portion, he crushes the social game. A lot of people didn't expect Tony to be so personable. I've known Tony for six years. I love the guy. And I knew people would too if they just got to know him. And people got to know him. He's funny. He's caring. He's, you know, people enjoy Tony. And so, you know, the, the social aspect, the alliances he made and, and, you know, that I brought to the table. He brought me people, I brought him people, and together we formed huge alliances in several of them. So, you know, the, the outwit, I mean, he crushes that. And then the outlast, he's sitting there, it's day 39. He, Michelle's the only one that can say they outlasted too. His torch has not been snuffed in this game. Michelle's torch has not been snuffed in this game. Natalie's has. So I think it's pretty clear who deserves the win. Tony's got the best resume. It's going to boil down to can a jury of winners who have never been stung before not be bitter? And I hope the answer is yes. Because if the answer is yes, this season will be a success. Tony will win. And that's the way season 40 needs to end. I look at the Criteria, Tony was in on every single vote except the Ben vote. And the only reason he wasn't in on the Ben vote is because I purposely didn't put him in, in the event that I went to the final, I needed to be able to say, yeah, he wasn't either. So he could have been in on that one. It wasn't like we blindsided him to hurt his game. I left him out of the vote to help my game in the event that I go to the end. So essentially, Tony was in on every single vote this season. He's the only one sitting there that can say that, you know? That's powerful, that means you have control, that means you have alliances. He had several different alliances, you know? We had the system, we had Cops R Us, we had me, Ben, Sophie, Tony, we had, I mean, the, you, the game changers, we ha you name it, it was an alliance, and so, you know, you look at who controlled, um, who controlled the game. I think that's what Survivor's about, is who's in with what's going on, who's steering it, who's driving, and the people that are left, like, you know, I feel like Tony is the only one that, Tony is the only one that can say that. So I look at who was in control, I look at how they treated people, and I look at what they did around camp, you know. Um, there are people that don't do anything, and that's really frustrating. That's not Tony. Tony's a hard worker, you know. So th that's my criteria. How hard did you work around camp? How nice you were to people. Now, nice doesn't mean not writing their name down. Nice is when it's an off day and you're just sitting around having conversations that you're being genuine and true. Now when it comes down to writing someone's name down, that doesn't mean you're mean, it's just part of the game. So, you know, that's that's the social part that you have to be personable with people. He doesn't talk crap behind people's back and 
and then just playing the game. He won four immunities. He found a hidden immunity idol. I mean, um, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, I think that is a well-rounded player. It encompasses everything you need to have to win.